right. <laughs> hey there, folks. This is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We're out here in the pasture with the cows, and they're grumpy. <laughs> they're mad at me right now. Um, I'll tell you why they're mad at me. They're mad because the grass quality on this side of the farm is not as good as the grass quality on the other side of the farm, and it's been really dry, but we are preparing for a hurricane. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. We're gonna talk about the cows and what we do out here on the farm, mob grazing, intensive grazing, and regenerative farming. You guys are gonna learn a little bit if you're deciding to start farming on your own, or if you just wanna see how a small cattle operation goes. So come along today as we have a little bit of fun out here on the farm with the girls and boys right here on the Stony Ridge. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. If this is your first time here, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Love to have you back here. All around us is a 150 acre first generation farm. And today we're gonna talk about farming. So we talk about a lot of stuff on the channel. We do tool reviews. We do all kinds of cool stuff. We even travel all over the country and visit other farms, which you'll see in a future video. But right now, I am preparing these lovely ladies for a hurricane. We've got a hurricane coming up the coast right now, and I've got to put a lot of thought into what we do. So we've got a solar well set up over here. The solar well powers all the water on the farm for the cattle. What happens when the sun goes behind the clouds is the solar well doesn't work. So there's a big water tank, a water cistern, 1,500 gallons of storage for the cows. Now they don't drink as much when it's cool and when it's rainy, and they also get a lot of moisture from the grass itself. That's right, girl. <laughs> so we don't really have to prepare so much for the watering, but we do have to turn on our water cistern so that water falls down to each of our waterers all throughout the farm. This whole system is fed by gravity, which is really cool. I'll post a link at the end of this video to some of the water system videos. They're really, really good and educational. So when I bought the farm, this area right here that you see did not look like this. So this was all overgrown and brush and briars and mess and it was about I don't know 12 feet tall that shop building wasn't there there wasn't a fence on the farm not a stick of wood nothing like that so we cut timber on a hundred acres of land I'm stepping over the electric fence hope I don't get shot we cut timber on a hundred acres of land we utilized that money to clear the land. So we cleared nearly 100 acres of land on this 150 acre parcel. So it's been a huge, huge chore. And these are my girls. So earlier this year, we had about 45 cows. Hey, this is Freedom right here, number five. And this is Sweetie, my favorite cow. Sweetie, hey, Sweetie Pie. How you doing, girl? You miss me today? Give me cow kisses. Yes, you're a good girl. Very good girl. I don't think I'll ever get rid of Sweetie. She's going to be the cow that stays the longest. Oh, man. Love. I don't know if you can love a cow, but if you can, that's the one. <laughs> so, guys, looking around, all you see here is a regenerative farm. We move these animals every 12 hours to a new paddock of grass. And we're going to be moving the girls here in just a few minutes so you guys can see exactly how easy it is and how all this works. The cows follow me basically like kittens, right girls? <laughs> so we'll just walk out here and we're going to move them. You can see that we are on a pasture, but we are not on a strictly grass pasture. So there's Cerisi lespediza in here. There's clover in here. There are all sorts of wild grasses. There's this grass we call purple top. There's the undesirable grass right here. This is what we call broom sedge or broom straw around here. You'll also see fescue and all sorts of various wild grasses. We want our animals, and this is also a little bit of ragweed, common ragweed. We want our animals to graze on pastures that are multi-species. In other words, I don't care how much you like spaghetti and ice cream, you can't just eat spaghetti and ice cream or you're gonna get sick. And the same thing goes with these animals. So you see them walking in here behind me. 
They're all big, fat old cows. They haven't had any medications or antibiotics ever in their lives. They have not had any wormer in their lives. There are several cows out here that haven't had any wormer in their entire lives. So what we're trying to do is build genetics here on the farm pastured genetics and if we have a cow that doesn't do so well this is woolly bully and i don't really want to get too close to woolly bully but if we have a cow that has genetics that doesn't seem to favor grass and not being wormed and medicated then we get it off the farm okay so we're building genetics here on the stony ridge farm more than anything and we're building soil so instead of cutting hay off the land and a lot of people have a hard time understanding this on a 150 acre piece of property with about 85 acres of cleared total cleared and fenced pasture if we had to fertilize and lime this land and cut our own hay it's going to cost us upwards of thirty thousand dollars a year to feed these animals. I can buy the hay for under $10,000 per year and put it on the land. So we've got really poor soil here. And if you're buying a piece of property, there's hope. If you're buying a piece of property that has really poor soil, we're rolling out hay bales on the land all winter long. Now in the summertime, mob grazing, intensive mob grazing. So we're putting a lot of pressure on the grass. And the way we do this is by moving them every 12 hours to a small paddock. This is about an acre right here, 35 cows, one acre or even three quarters of an acre is enough. We want them to eat one third, trample one third, and leave one third. And these guys do a full 60 day rotation. They know they're moving, check them out. They do a full 60 day rotation on the farm. And it's just super easy, super simple, once you get your setup. And let me show you how it's all set up. So the girls are gonna get loud in a second because they know they're moving. But this is called poly braid. It is a poly wire, polyethylene with a metal wire inside of it probably about eight metal wires inside of it and this is called a strain right pigtail step in post right here that's what we based the entire farm off of so if you had a piece of barbed wire you wouldn't be able to just tie it in a knot like that so this is a splice pretty simple this conducts electricity <laughs> throughout the farm. This is Cody, the first born on the, on the farm. He's a spoiled brat. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna open this gate. So the way this works, and we'll point it out to you, there's a waterer out there in the middle of the pasture. That waterer has a wagon wheel, looks like a wagon wheel. So that would be the center of the wagon wheel and strings go off of that center all over. This is a five acre pasture. It's divided into six different paddocks as we move the cows through. They were on this grass eight days ago and you cannot tell that they were there at all. In fact, this cow's still eating. Let's tell you about what nobody told me. The integral part of your farm, the most important part of any piece of property if you're deciding to raise animals like this is your water system. So guys, don't have the cows on the trailer before you have your fences and your water system. You've got to think about good fencing. We have what's called tornado wire out here on the farm. That tornado wire is a woven type wire. I will post a link at the end of this video to our fencing series if you want to see some of that. Water, fencing, and land. We have to think about where the water is and how do we get it to our cows and we fenced out all the waterways so no cow gets in any waterway here on the farm. That's to help our streams to be healthy and to help us have healthier animals. When we mob graze, when we move our animals on a every 12 hour basis, that's Mona over there moaning by the way, when we move our animals every 12 hours, what that does is it allows them to poop and pee on a spot intensively. Hooves actually stimulate the grass to grow and it's even proven that the saliva from a cow will actually <laughs> help the grass to grow. So pretty interesting stuff, guys. You can research it a whole lot deeper than what I'm gonna go into today. So the cows are on multi-species pasture. They're on the rule of a thirds. Eat one third, trample one third, and leave one third. So when they come back through, we don't have to worm them because they're not eating right beside their own manure. So the cows' noses never hit poopy. And when they never hit poopy, we don't have to give them a dewormer, which is awesome. We don't have to give them antibiotics. We do have to get that bug off my head though. 
<laughs> you never know what's gonna happen out here. We don't have to give them antibiotics. Now, if we've got a sick cow, we treat a sick cow, but we don't treat an animal that's not sick. And the difference in this beef that you see right here is that this animal and this animal and that animal is raised with care. Just because these are beef cows, just like Butthead right here, just because they're beef cows doesn't mean that we have to be cruel to them and we have to be mean to them. These animals should live their best life, the most wonderful life possible, so that our food is the best and most wonderful food. So guys, we should all be so blessed to live a wonderful, great life with one bad moment. Isn't that right, girl? And it breaks my heart sometimes to think about that and to think about these animals as food, but it also breaks my heart to think about what's happening in feedlots. Over-medicated animals wading belly deep in manure. That is what breaks my heart. And the consumer just doesn't know that. If you think that the beef that you're buying in the grocery store is out on grass like this on pasture, you're dead wrong, guys. You're dead wrong unless you're buying grass-fed beef. And you need to think about that. Just because somebody in some office says it's certified organic doesn't mean that that cow, this beautiful animal, hasn't been wading belly deep in its own manure. I mean, it's just a sad, sad thing. So we're gonna go ahead and move the cows. That's my soapbox about feedlot beef. Um, some feedlots are ran differently. I will tell you, I visited a friend recently and he had a, had a feedlot and it looked clean as a whistle. So again, the animal's health is our major concern and our health and the health of the people that are buying the beef from the farm is a major, major concern. It starts in the soil, it goes to the animals, and then it goes to you. It's all cyclic. So let's open up and get these cows on this next piece of grass. When I move them to a new paddock, I sing my cow song. Every farmer has their own cow song. Listen to their reaction. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open her up. This is that polyelectric wire. It is hot. In other words, it has an electric fence charged to it. It will not shock you because I have a plastic handle right here. I'm gonna take this right back and hook it on this post right over here. Hook it right onto that post. And that's it. We're gonna open it on up and these girls will come out onto some new grass. Come on, girls. Woo! Come on, everybody. This is freedom number five. That's butthead right there. <laughs> My favorite ones all have names. <laughs> You'll notice there are some flies here, guys. Our cows don't have systemic fly tags in their ears. In other words, I don't wanna eat fly spray. Do you wanna eat fly spray? You put a systemic ear tag in their ear and it leaches a chemical in that helps keep the flies off. I don't do that, guys. I just don't do that. When we move the cows, Every 12 hours like this, they move faster than their manure and then flies can keep up, and therefore we don't have a heavy fly load. The fly load only becomes a problem when it's causing a health disparity with our animals. And that's my girl, that's Sweetie right there. All these little calves you see were born right here on the farm. We bring a bull in every year on the 4th of July. We leave them in for about three months. And Tammy, Tammy is a curiosity. Tammy is a donkey and she is a guard donkey. She is here to protect those young calves in case of a coyote attack or any kind of predator attack. So that's Tammy right there. Go ahead, Tammy. <laughs> Tammy does not let me get near her. You can see how jumpy she is. I want her a little bit wild. I don't want her to be a tame animal. So every animal, 35 cows and one donkey, all just walk through this area and you can't even tell. That's what I'm talking about right there. So we're talking about regenerative farming. We're also talking about prepping for the hurricane. So in preparation for the hurricane, I have a water cistern filled up over here. We're gonna have some really cloudy days for about five days. Each cow during that time will probably drink anywhere from five to 12 gallons of water. On a hot, hot summer day, they might drink 25 or 30 gallons of water. So you've got to be prepared for that. You've got to think ahead. Moving them every 12 hours takes about 
25 minutes per day. And if you tune into the live stream channel, I'll post a link down there in the comment section. I'll also post a link in the video description. You'll see me go out and take care of these girls every single day. Preparation for hurricane. We don't want the cows in the woods because things can fall down on them. We want them out in open pasture, open land, and they'll have plenty of water because it's gonna be raining like crazy. The wind's gonna be blowing about 25, 20, 25 miles an hour out here and the cows will be safe. So guys, come along again here on the Stony Ridge Farm with me. I just wanted to take you around, talk to you a little bit about what goes on here on this regenerative farm and the way that I think animals should be raised and probably the same way that you think animals should be raised. They should be raised in peace. They should be raised in a stress-free environment. They should also be raised the way you would want to live, okay? So treating our animals with respect caring for them and giving them the best life possible. That's what this is all about. Regenerative farming and raising your animals right. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. The sun's about to set, it's absolutely gorgeous. I've got a catfish pond right over here and I'm gonna go over, feed the catfish. Guys, take care, thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back here on the Stony Ridge Regenerative Farm. See ya. Come on down to the Stony Ridge. <laughs> That's my cow song. Take care, guys. If it will pause. Maybe it'll pause. Suddenly silver. <laughs> I didn't have great chest hair before I bought the farm. This beard was all black. <laughs> it's so stressful. Time to stare directly into the sun and pretend like my eyes aren't burning. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> You're a little, getting a little rough, aren't you?